Lisa Wagner Carollo, and I'm the founder and the artistic director of Still Point Theatre Collective. I wanted to be an actor since I was about five years old, and but when I was 15, I, I went on a church retreat and had a very deep spiritual experience and realized that my faith life could be part of my, my everyday life. After that, throughout high school, I was thinking a lot about going into ministry. But at the same time, I was in all the shows and I was performing, I was singing. Then when I got into college, I was drawn more into social justice along with my spiritual focus. When I got out of college, I really didn't see a way to put these things together yet. I was still really struggling theater and social justice and spirituality. And so I went and lived for two years in a large community that was just starting in Kansas City. There are communities all over the world with a spiritual focus that have at their core, as their core members, they have adults who are developmentally disabled. When I came to Chicago, I was brought here by a theater company that was doing the kind of work I wanted to do. It was called Call to Action. And I started working at Esperanza Community Services on Wednesdays doing a theater workshop. I was also working at one of their group homes, but when they heard I'd done this work in Kansas City, they said, we'd really like you to start a program here in Chicago. I spent about three months on a retreat on the West Coast and was really trying to discern the unique thing that I could do in the world, my vocation. And I realized that doing theater in this way, combining spirituality and social justice, was the unique thing that I could do. And so I started Still Point upon my return from that retreat, and that was 21 years ago now. So from the very beginning, our work with adults with developmental disabilities was, was part of Still Point Theater. I had the happy idea to allow myself to be happy. No limits, no judgment, just happy. I had the happy idea to spend a day, a week, a moment even, free of racing thoughts, and anxiety. We want to help the students that we work with to um, raise their self-esteem and, and for them to build up to a performance and then perform and get up in front of people and delight them and make them laugh and give them joy builds the, you know, is is really key for building their self-esteem. And people come up afterwards, you did a great job, and they get a certificate. <laughs> and it's, it's just, you know, we hope that it really helps them to strengthen their own self-concept. Self because there's many people who, <laughs> of that community, that are very talented, and they have... They, they have gifts to share, they're artists, they sing, and for me, they have a right to be able to express that and to develop those gifts and to give them to the larger community who need those gifts. That was one of my visions when I started Still Point, that theater should be for everyone and not just people who can pay a high price for a class or pay to get into a performance but it should be available to people who are who are on the margins. Creating a, a company like Still Point and keeping it going all these years is really hard. Very, very difficult. And I think that things spring up and then they only last a few years and then they peter out just because it is so hard. I think if there were some way we could dream and come up with a structure where it would be easier for people to start an arts program and keep it going, 
without so much burnout and stress, um, that would be beautiful. We're surging life force. This vast power that we can tap sometimes. But God, approaching. I knew for myself how much working in theater helped was helping me to grow as a person and helping me to understand myself better and build skills, build confidence within myself. So for me, that just naturally played out in working with the Imagination Workshop, with working at Esperanza, working here with the Ravenswood players, that they too would experience growth um, in many different ways, in many different ways. It really depends on where they start from, <laughs> you know, what they bring in and where growth is needed. We had um, a woman who was at Esperanza and during class she would just be running around. She would, she loved to flirt with like whoever happened to come to the door. She'd run and try to grab their hand and she, it was very hard to keep her in her seat. But it was interesting. There was a song from Moulin Rouge, um, the song Your Song. And as soon as I put that on, she would get very quiet and just do the most amazing dance. Just incredible. And so it helped her find that kind of quiet spot that, that it didn't seem that was... It, it, it just felt like it really wasn't a big part of her life being quiet like that, running around and jumping out of her chair and, you know, but it really helped her find that quiet place. And it grew into a performance that she would do for the school. And it was just thrilling for her to get up and do that. And it really amazed people and they would just applaud and give her kudos and, and she recently died a couple of years ago, really unexpectedly. And in the program for the funeral, it was stated as one of her accomplishments was being a member of the Imagination Workshop. So for us, it may seem small or what we're doing, but it makes a big impact and becomes a a part of the actors' lives that they're very proud of.